Did you know you are worthy, loved, and chosen? Some of us here would be able to say yes to all three, some of us to two, and some of us might be living thinking that none of this applies to you. Today's message is going to be on identity, specifically our identity in Christ, who God says you are, and who he designed you to be. Unfortunately, we live in a world that is so quickly trying to give us a title or label because it makes it easier to understand how we fit into everything. We've all been asked that classic question when meeting someone new of, what do you do? Those close to me know I do not like this question because how can we be limited to one title, to one job, to one thing? People, <laughs> people aren't asking who you are. They're basically saying, what, what, like, what are you? There's a culture of simplifying people to what they do, what they have done, what they look like, sound like, or what do they have. There's a danger to this because we can very easily believe that the answer to all the what's that people ask, and the what's we also ask ourselves, dictates who we are and focus on our limitations. The truth of your identity can be found in the word of God, not in the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17, speaks on how we are God's ambassadors and says, so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. In Christ, you have a new life. You are no longer defined by the things of this world, but by who God says you are. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Someone here needs to hear that your past does not, not have a hold of your future. Your past does not define you, and it will not dictate where you are going. There is a new life that has been gifted to you because you are so loved by God. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 to 5 says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. Before God made the world, he loved and chose you. Before he made anything that the enemy would then try to use to define you, God already adopted you into his own family. God didn't have to do this, he wanted to. Before the world was created, you were the focus of his love and are whole and made holy by his love. The enemy came to try disillusion and separate us from God's love, to separate us from the source of our identity, by amplifying our sin, by telling us lies, by introducing shame. The enemy has tried so hard to define who you are, and is probably reveling when we believe it's something of our own doing. Whatever we think our identity is, if it is not based in Christ, the enemy will use it to define limit and keep you from moving forward. Some of us just want to be part of a community, to have friends, to be wanted, to be accepted. Some of us want a partner, to not be alone, to be loved. Some of us want to be wealthy, to have material things, to be successful. Some of us just want everything. <laughs> but if you are holding on to these things, the things of this world, idolizing them, using this as the scale of what you are and who you have become, ultimately, you will not be fulfilled. This often leads to you starting to believe that you are not enough when you do not have these things. And that is exactly what the enemy wants you to believe. And that is a lie. Because firstly, nothing can separate you from God's love. So therefore, nothing you do in this world will change how God sees you, and nothing you accomplish or even don't accomplish will define you. 
Ultimately, it is not what you do. It is who you are. And you are a child of God. A good way to identify what you might be holding on to is by thinking of your fears. What gives you anxiety and what scares you? For me, it's not being good enough, not in relation to the world, but by some ridiculous standard that I just like to set for myself. And this is what the enemy has used in my life to amplify my anxiety and to amplify my unworthiness and to keep my eyes on me, to keep me down and to limit my life. And this was an issue of value and not feeling valued. But then there's Psalm 139, which I encourage you all to read when you are questioning your identity. It's very long, but it's so worth it. And it has like, spoken so much truth into my, my, my life, completely renewed my mind, and allowed me to be able to stand here confidently knowing everything that God says about me. And the world will not define you. You can trust and know that God already has. And you are chosen, worthy, strong, forgiven, have purpose, victorious, filled with peace, hopeful, whole, and completely, fully, and utterly loved.